Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. Wouldn't it be nice if overclocking your PC were a little more straightforward? I mean, sure, there are those automatic one-click solutions that can give a quick and dirty boost to your CPU, but if you wanna do it yourself, you end up looking at all these confusing options in your UEFI BIOS instead of just a dial that you can turn to make the PC go faster. And one thing that's easy to get confused by is the base clock and something called the CPU multiplier, which together determine your CPU speed. But what the heck are these things and why is it that they are separated out instead of just having one field where you punch in your desired CPU frequency? It's a great question because even many enthusiasts are only familiar with overclocking with the multiplier. And I get why. The easiest way to adjust your CPU speed is to ignore everything else and bump up the multiplier, adding voltage when it becomes unstable. This approach does have some drawbacks though. Unless you're running AMD, you will need to buy an unlocked K or X series processor and on both the blue and red team, you'll need to buy a supported motherboard. Furthermore, multiplier overclocking doesn't offer very fine control. So if your system is, let's say, stable at 4.5 gigahertz, but then crashes immediately at 4.6, who's to say that it might not have been also stable at 4.57? You could be leaving performance on the table with this method. So now let's move on to the base clock. So as it turns out, your CPU, GPU, and RAM are not the only things inside your system that have a speed rated in megahertz. And the base clock's job is to keep your PC's components in sync with each other. So the base clock is provided by your chipset, and you can learn more about chipsets up here. But what you need to know for now is that the chipset basically serves as a kind of coordinator between your CPU and your other components. And this base clock will tend to be much lower than the rated speeds of your processor and your memory. A common default base clock is just 100 megahertz. But while that might be adequate for some hypothetical low speed controller or something, it would be incredibly slow for a modern CPU. So that is why your processor uses a multiplier. That allows it to run multiple cycles for every one system cycle provided by your base clock. <laughs> it's really hard, it's like, you know, this, this whole thing. So if you have a processor that's rated for 3.5 gigahertz, what's happening is that by default, your system is probably running a 100 megahertz base clock with a 35 times multiplier. So this base clock times multiplier paradigm lets your CPU match up with the rest of your computer while still allowing it to run at a high speed. And even though many CPUs actually have a high tolerance for overclocking even further, many other components, such as your PCI Express lanes or your SATA controller, cannot deal well with running out of spec. That means that adjusting your base clock by more than a tiny amount, like a couple percent, can often cause stability issues because it connects to so many different components and instability in just one of them can bring down your system. Fun fact, in many cases, base clock overclocking can lead to much worse types of instability where instead of a blue screen, you end up corrupting your OS or even losing a bunch of data. So with that in mind then, what's the point of being able to change the base clock at all? Well, some CPUs and motherboards are more tolerant of base clock adjustments than others, and some processors even support what are called straps. These are base clock values significantly above the default that might be stable enough and can be useful not just for boosting your CPU's speed, but also that of your memory and sometimes your GPU, while the speed of other components will remain unaffected. So you may wanna look up what straps your particular platform can support. And even if you don't end up using a strap that's much higher than the default speed, adjusting the base clock can still be useful if you just wanna squeeze every last megahertz out of your hardware and hit a clock speed that's in between two multiplier settings. It really depends on what parts you specifically have, so don't be afraid of some trial and error. That is, as long as there's no important data on your machine. Just remember to keep your expectations and possibly your CPU speeds reasonable. Speaking of reasonable, this segue isn't great, but by my standards, it's pretty reasonable. Check out Brilliant, a problem-solving website that teaches you to think 
like a computer scientist. Instead of passively listening to lectures, you get to master concepts by solving fun and challenging problems, and Brilliant provides the tools and framework that you need to tackle these challenges. Brilliant's thought-provoking content based around breaking up complexities into bite-sized, understandable chunks is designed to lead you from curiosity to mastery, and you'll be in the company of over five and a half million members who share your curiosity and love for math and science. So what are you waiting for? You can support TechWiki and learn more about Brilliant by clicking the link in the video description or going to brilliant.org slash Linus Tech Tips and signing up for free. The first 200 of you, that's you, who go to that link will get 20% off an annual subscription. So be sure to check it out. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other videos. Don't forget to leave a comment with video suggestions and subscribe now. Because if you don't subscribe now, you'll have to do it later. Everyone subscribes eventually.